He a rapper, but don't got a team. Suck in my waist, so I'm loving my beans. Like a million views in a day. There's so many ways to get paid. I tried dipping, he begged me to. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. It's your girl, Salasha Dance. Sir, if you don't know me, you know me now, y'all. Make sure you hit that like, comment, and subscribe because why not? If you're new here, hey. And if you're not new and you still not subscribed, what are you doing? Anyways, y'all, this is actually a very serious video. This is not funny at all. This is actually very serious. This is my experience and my homegirl was also with me in the car during this experience. So this is not something that I even want to be joking about or like taking this as a joke because I don't know if any of you guys have experienced this like, you know, being in a club and things like that. So as y'all can see by the title, I'm going to be talking about how I got followed from the club one time and how to take precautions from being followed or things like that, you know. First things first, y'all, I was working in a club in Virginia at the time. I don't think I was a baby dancer. Well, I was a baby dancer, but I think I was a couple months in. Like, I wasn't fresh, fresh, fresh. One thing about me, y'all, I'm always on my tent. Like, no matter what, no matter where we go, no matter what I'm doing, no matter who I'm with. Like, I always have my mind on something could go wrong or anything could happen at any given moment. Like, that's just how I think. I don't know why. So this particular night, y'all, I was working in a club in Virginia. If you know, this is when I was a little baby dancer when I was in college and things like that. It was just like a regular night at the club, very packed night at the club. Like, I was making money. Everybody was making money that night, you know? I didn't get any weird vibes. I wasn't like flirting with anybody crazy for them to want to follow me home or, or anything like that, y'all. I, I really was not. So this night, me and my homegirl, we was making so much money on stage. We was making money on the floor. Like we was doing private dances, like things like that. And at the end of the night, y'all, at the end of the night, when me and Shelly was on stage, um, this Spanish guy, I'm pretty, he's probably Mexican. I'm pretty sure he was Mexican. A Mexican guy, he comes and he tipped me on the stage. This is the last, this is the last set of the night. He comes to tip me on the stage or whatever. But I could tell by the way he was tipping me, like he tried to become like a little aggressive, but not too much because you know sometimes dudes be doing certain stuff in the club, but sometimes it can be extreme. And I have to tell you, like relax, like you know don't do that. For example, I don't want y'all to think it's anything crazy, but like dudes will probably smack your ass or like try to pull you to them or like little things like that but you know you can just tell them like relax like you go too much that's what I, I always tell them like, if I feel like you're doing too much I'm gonna tell you you go too much this particular um Mexican guy he tipping me my just the last stage of the night so I'm like all right I'm just I'm gonna take his money but once he started doing too much I was telling him like really like chill like you know chill so I'm not really sure if he spoke English or if he spoke like a little bit of English or what, but I speak Spanish, y'all. So I speak Spanish enough to have a conversation and to understand, but I'm not fluent as if I was born in one of those countries. So anyways, y'all, fast forward. Um, When he was sitting there like at the stage, I was talking to him in Spanish so I could stop dancing and me and him could have like a conversation. It's the end of the night. I'm pretty sure this dude is drunk, like extremely drunk out of his mind, the way he was acting. But I wasn't thinking, like I wasn't thinking he was gonna follow me home, y'all like that. That shit was so weird, y'all. So when, so he was sitting next to like the locker room. Like we gotta, all the girls gotta walk through a hall to get to the locker room. He was sitting right next to like the hall when I was walking to the locker room. And he was saying bye to me like when I was walking through the hall. So I was like, okay, bye. But my, one of my other friends, I had a homeboy that was at the club that day that I had to take home. And he was still sitting in the club. And he told me that the Spanish guys and them were sitting there as if they were waiting for somebody. Like, he didn't tell me this until after because he didn't know, like, everything was going on. But, yeah, he, the Spanish guys, they were just sitting there, like, waiting. Like, as if one of the girls in the back was their friends or something like that. That's another thing. When you're dancing, y'all need to make sure y'all dance at a club where the security is top tier. And I'm not going to lie, the club that I worked at, the security was horrible like horrible like it was just y'all if you watch my day three vlog then you know the security is horrible but anyways y'all so we leave in the club we all get in the car i'm in the, i'm in the front of course i'm driving my homegirl kai if you watch my if you from way behind you know who kai is and then my other friend i'm not gonna say his name in, in this vlog i'm gonna just call him um 
Sosa. So Sosa was in the back seat. Um, Sosa is like 6'4", black guy. Um, and you know, he didn't have any weapons on him or anything like that because we're at the club, you can't bring your weapons in. So yeah, he just didn't have it on him. So uh, like we noticed when we're leaving that a truck like cuts his lights on, cut their lights on as soon as we were about to pull off. So there's a truck behind me while I'm driving, but like me and Kai, we're arguing in the front seat. We, so we, I wasn't paying attention to who was behind me or nothing. She had a headache. I had my music up. She was screaming, telling me to cut my music down. Like we were, we were getting into argument like while we was driving home. Mind you, my friend's in the back seat and me and Kai, we just arguing, right? So after we start arguing like a little bit, I started to notice like a truck was behind me and the truck had their high beams on and they were going full speed, like bumping up, like wanting to be this close to my car. So at this point, me and her stopped arguing and I'm like, I know something ain't right. Like something is not right. So I'm still driving on the highway, right? And I, I tell my friends and I call the security at the club. I say, look, I'm being followed. Like I was really being followed. Like, so, and I didn't know who was in the car at the time. Like, I didn't know it was the Mexican. It could have been anybody. But, yeah, so I'm driving. I'm driving. I'm driving. We're going down the highway. So now I'm speeding up. Like, I'm going probably 100 miles per hour. They're going 100 miles per hour, too, behind me. So I'm telling my friends, mind you, I got a little Honda, y'all. I'm telling my friends, like, look, I'm about to just hit their truck. Like, since they're going to follow me and play, I'm going to just hit their truck. But I had other people in the car, and I was like, you know what? I need to be sane. I don't need to be crazy right now, too be saying so hurry up and yank my car and i tried to catch this exit mind you i wasn't gonna get the exit but i was just catching the exit to see to make sure they was following so when i yanked my car y'all like now my car kind of swear the the truck behind me they yanked their car and they kept the exit with me too so i'm like bro i know i'm not being followed at this point like at this point i was i knew i was being followed so my own boy in the car he like pull up to my house. So we already near his house because he had a weapon in his house. So he like, pull up to my house. We pull up to the house. I drop him off. He's like, now when I get out of this car, I want you to keep driving around the circle. Like whatever you do, don't stop. The car, the truck follows us into his neighborhood. Y'all like this how I know I was being followed, bro. They followed me all the way to my homeboy's neighborhood. So when I dropped him off, he ran to the house and went get his gun. He, I'm still driving around. He came back, he got in the car with his gun. And the truck still following me. So I called security at the club. I'm like, look, I'm being followed. They like, come back to the club. Just drive back to the club. My thing is, I'm not driving back to the club where I know the security is at. Like, I know you're not going to do anything if anything is to happen to you. So we pull up to a Wawa. Me and Kai, my friend, who's like, just running, just go into the Wawa. Like, go into the bathroom. Me and Kai, we ran into the bathroom, y'all. Like, we were so freaking scared out of our mind. We ran into the bathroom. We and my friend, my homeboy Sosa, that was in the back, he said, do not come out the bathroom until I tell you to. So me and her, I'm in the bathroom, and we hear people telling us to come out, but like, we standing on the toilet at this point, so our feet is not being seen under, because we didn't know like who was following us, right? So, yeah, y'all, so it, it was just so crazy. So I have my feet up on the seat. We got our feet up so nobody can see under y'all. So when we come, they, my friend Sosa gave me the okay to come out. When when they came out, the police was already outside at Wawa. So I'm like, who called the police? So I guess when Wawa, like, or any store maybe, see something suspicious and see, like, girls need help. Mind you, it's like 3 in the morning. You can tell we're dancers. Like, so I guess if you see girls and that need help or see anybody that needs help, their, their protocol is to call the cops. So they ended up calling the cops. The cops get there, y'all. I see the Mexican dude and his friend in the truck. Like, they're just drive. they're in the truck, they're getting back, and, well, first they were in a Wawa, but then they were walking in the truck, but all the police were there. I forgot to tell you the fact that I called all my homeboys, so all my homeboys is at the gas station at this point, like, it wasn't just my homeboy Sosa that was with me, I'm calling everybody, so it was like, hella cars, Kai brother pulled up, like, it was a whole bunch of just niggas, alright, whole bunch of niggas there, so I'm assuming, like, it, like, them Spanish people are also probably like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with this right now. So anyway, so the police, the police is like talking to them. This is why my friend was saying like, oh, why? Talking to the people like, why were you following them? They talking about some, oh, they were our friends. Like they were our friends. They gonna tell the police that we're their friends. I don't even know you from a canopy. I don't know your name. You don't know my name. Like all you did was come tip me at the club. But 
that was the most scariest thing that ever happened to me all like it was it was extremely scary but luckily i had my friend so so with me in the back because if anything needed to get serious he had protection it would have gotten serious but at the same time he was telling us like go in the bathroom like don't come out like this was on some movie stuff like it felt like a movie y'all but at the end of the day the police just was like made them drive home um and literally that was it the police was like okay y'all just leave or whatever so we still stayed at the wawa for a little bit just to make sure that they was gone and then yeah that was like really like the end of the story but it was so scary like it was so scary but i ain't never seen them back at the club again you know usually people that enjoy the club they gonna come back but i ain't never seen them again and i'm glad i didn't see them again because that was just some scary shit like for real like i don't know if, if y'all have ever experienced being a follow from the club or something just leave a comment below but it is very serious and that's my first and only time that has happened to me um knock on wood not going away because I look, y'all. I love my life, okay. I don't need, I don't need any of that. I don't be leaving people on at the club. I don't be like, hey, I'm coming home with you. Wait for me. No, don't wait for me. You, you, you say, am I coming home with you? I'm telling you, no. like real life. I know a lot of girls be like faking it and shit like that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna come home. No, I tell them straight up, no. Oh, why not? Cause I don't know you like that. Like I'm one of them dancers. I don't. I don't care. But yeah, y'all. I'm just glad that I'm safe when that situation has happened. Like it could have went worse, and I could have crashed my car. Like you know, it could have been worse. It could have been worse if I was by myself. Like you know, things like that. So I just want to say this is definitely a serious topic, and I think people should take it seriously. Like for sure. Like for sure. And now we're gonna talk about ways to how to prevent that from happening to you. One, first things first, I want you guys to make sure that you have protection on you at all times. And this is not even just for being followed from the club. This is from being robbed after the club, like anything like that. I've never had that situation happen to me, not going with again, but being followed from the club, being stalked, uh, if you feel like somebody is stalking you, um, being robbed, like having beef with other dancers. Like one thing about it, you need to have protection as a dancer because you're into a specific lifestyle. Okay, so I'm not trying to scare y'all for the people that have that who are not dancers, but I'm just telling you the truth. I'm letting it be known what it is. So. Yeah, I recommend having protection on you at all times. You also need to make sure you're on your tent. And people always say, like, what is on your tent? On your tent means, like, if something's going on behind me, you know, it's, I know it's going on behind me. If something about to happen, I know. If I see security letting somebody in with a gun or something like that, I know how to move. It just means you're on your tent line. It just means, like, you're aware of everything that's going on. So when I drive home every single night, I don't care. I don't care what the fuck it is. I always make sure that my my I look in my rear view mirror to make sure nobody is following me. If I feel like a car is following me, I'm driving extra slow. I might take a wrong exit on purpose. Like, you know, I just do stuff like that just so you know. When I'm walking to my car after the club, I make sure I always got my phone. I'm always, even if I'm not vlogging, I'll, I'll probably act like I'm vlogging, act like I'm talking to somebody or whatever so I can see who's behind me at all times, like, I don't care. I walk to my car after the club, I make sure I get to my car. Um, I make sure I don't walk through a group of people. I make sure like I got this knee mug on my face, but I already have natural knee mug, but I just make sure like people know like, don't fuck right, like she don't wanna be fucked with, you know, or whatever. If someone speaks to me, I say, hey, I keep it pushing because I don't wanna be rude and then, you know, things like that. When, when you're old, you rude to somebody, a male figure usually. Um, you know, they get offensive and they try to do too much about it. So, if you try to talk to me after the club, I just be like, hey, how you doing? No, thank you. And I just get my car. Um, other ways to be precautious. When you're in the club, know who you're talking to, what you're talking about. Don't overdo it. I wouldn't tell you, wait for me. I wouldn't say anything like that because they're really going to wait for you. And then when you get outside, it's like, oh, you're still here? Like, no, you, you told them to wait for you. I would say... Uh, if your club has security that walks you to your car that is good, then y'all need to use that security regardless because you just never know. My club specifically, we never had that. Like in my first club, they were trash at security, so it was like, whatever. If you're a new dancer, try to go with somebody to the club all the time. Like, don't go by yourself. If you're not aware of where you're at, if you're working in a new city, a new state, just be aware of your surroundings. Like, literally, that's, that's what I gotta really say about that. Like, 
and be on your 10, okay? Don't be on your 9, your 8, your 7. Be on your 10 because you just never know. You really just never know, y'all. But that was my experience from being followed from the club. Um, make sure you hit that like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. I really love y'all. I'm on the way to 3K. And I'm recording this today, and I'm dropping this today, baby. So you know I'm putting in that work, y'all. I'm really putting in that work. Like, for real. Because eventually, I got a surprise for y'all, so I ain't even going to tell y'all in this video. But, yeah, make sure you hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And I just want you guys to know, like, this is a very, very serious topic. So if you need any support, if you need any advice or anything like that, Leave a comment, DM me on Instagram, and y'all already know I'm going to respond. So, yeah, I'm going to see y'all on the next video. Bye. And you packing out nobody's pants. He a rapper, but don't got a chain. Stuck in my waist, so I'm moving my beans. Like a million views in a day. It's so many ways to get paid. I tried dipping, he begged me to stay. Babe, I'm not staying, I just want to play. In the party, he just want to rump. Big boobs in the bus, they pump. 